This is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain an adventure, comedy, sci-fi film called Inner Space. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. During an event honoring the test pilots at the US Air Force, a drunk Lieutenant Tuck Pendleton comes out of the kitchen and sarcastically commends his colleagues for their achievements. When Tuck crashes onto a display of airplane models, the men decide to bring him into the kitchen to keep him out of sight of the guests. Tuck gets into a fight with the other pilots, so the commanding officer, Pete Blanchard, comes in to break it up. A while later, Lydia Maxwell, who's attending the event as a journalist, comes in to take Tuck home. As soon as they get to Tuck's apartment, Lydia attempts to leave, but Tuck convinces her to stay by playing their favorite song. In the morning, Lydia tries leaving quietly while Tuck is still asleep, but Tuck soon comes out to stop her from getting into a taxi. He begs Lydia to stay, but she tells him that their relationship is over because it hurts too much to be with him. When Lydia gets inside the vehicle, Tuck complains that he stubbed his toe when he kicked the cab's door. Lydia says he's better off with a broken toe than a broken heart. The taxi soon drives away, leaving Tuck naked on the street and screaming for Lydia. Two months later, Jack Putter visits Dr. Greenbush's clinic due to headaches, nausea, and shortness of breath. As Greenbush examines him, Jack tells him about his most recent nightmare. Jack recounts that he was working the registers at the market in his dream, but the prices were way higher than they were supposed to be. A red-haired woman buying the products calmly complained to him about the prices, but she suddenly took a small pistol from her purse and pulled the trigger, causing him to wake up in a panic. Greenbush realizes that there's nothing physically wrong with the Jack so he advises him to take a vacation and find a peaceful spot to relax. Elsewhere in the city, Dr. Niles tells Pete that Tuck has signed on to be the test pilot in their new project. When Pete asks why he chose Tuck, Niles points out that he is the only pilot crazy enough to agree to participate in the experiment. At the lab, Dr. Ozzy Wexler asks Tuck to go through a final physical test, but Tuck insists that he's ready for the procedure. Soon, Tuck gets inside the pod while the lab technicians check the systems for their operation. After loading the pod into a chamber, a robotic arm installs a round computer chip on a circuit board and another in Tuck's pod. The countdown commences and the pod spins rapidly until a flash of light covers Tuck's body. When the countdown ends, the pod is shrunk down to microscopic size and transferred to a syringe. Meanwhile, men in orange jumpsuits enter the lab's building and spray an incapacitating agent on the guard to knock him out. As Ozzy prepares to inject the pod into the rabbit, the intruders enter the lab and spray the lab personnel with the incapacitating gas. Soon, Dr. Margaret Kanker takes off her gas mask and takes the RAN computer chip on the circuit board. Ozzy hides in a corner behind some lab equipment, but Margaret eventually finds him. Ozzy grabs this wrench and runs, so Margaret contacts Igo on the radio and instructs him to capture Ozzy and get this wrench. Igo drives a car to chase after Ozzy when he sees him running out of the building, but the scientist evades him by jumping over the fence. As Igo continues to pursue him, Ozzy grabs a bike outside a house and rides it in the opposite direction of the traffic. Soon, Ozzy slams into a vehicle at a parking lot, so he goes inside a mall. Somewhere in the building, Jack buys a cruise ticket inside a travel agency for his vacation. When Igo spots Ozzy near the elevator, he shoots the scientist with a projectile from his finger. Ozzy gets inside the elevator and goes up one floor to avoid Igo. When the door opens, Ozzy sees Jack and injects him with a syringe. Igo sees Ozzy being surrounded by mascots after he drops to the ground due to his wound. Igo notices a man taking photos of the incident, so he steals his camera. Igo replaces his mechanical hand as he heads back to the lab. Later, Jack arrives at the supermarket to report for work. When Tuck regains consciousness, he tries to contact Mission Control to find out if he's inside the rabbit, but he gets no response. While Jack is working the registers, he is shocked upon seeing the red-haired woman in his nightmare. Somewhere inside Jack's body, Tuck activates the electromagnetic boosters, causing the cash registers to display the wrong prices. Jack starts to panic when his boss approaches him to find out what's wrong. The red-haired woman soon pulls out a pistol from her bag, but Jack realizes it's a lighter when she pulls the trigger. Jack starts hyperventilating after trying to swallow a handful of aspirin, so his co-worker slaps him in the face to calm him down. Tuck makes his way to Jack's eye and installs an optic sensor so he can see what Jack sees. Jack screams in pain after the device latches onto his eye. When Tuck gets a video signal on his screen, he is puzzled to see people he doesn't recognize. He soon realizes that he's not inside the rabbit, but a human when Jack stands up. Meanwhile, Margaret looks at the photos on the camera that Igo stole and finds out that Ozzy injected the syringe into Jack. She finds out Jack's last name and workplace from his name tag and instructs Igo to locate him. While Jack is on his way to the doctor, Tuck goes to Jack's ear to install a device to communicate with him. Soon. Tuck starts calling Jack's attention while he's in the elevator. In the waiting room, 
Tuck mentions that he's inside Jack's body, leading Jack to think that he's possessed. When Greenbush examines him, he shines a light into Jack's ear when he mentions that he hears a voice. The light blinds Tuck temporarily, causing him to exclaim, Oh God! Greenbush dismisses Jack's condition as theistic hysteria when Jack mentions that the voice is talking to him about God. Tuck's eyesight returns while Jack is about to relax at home. Jack refuses to believe that the voice he is hearing is real. So Tuck convinces him by releasing an EMP that damages Jack's TV. When Jack starts to believe him, Tuck explains that he's supposed to be injected into a rabbit after being miniaturized. A messenger suddenly knocks on the door to deliver Jack's cruise ticket. When the messenger comes in to use Jack's phone, Tuck tells him to leave the apartment because the man is not a real messenger. Jack attempts to run away, but the man pulls out a gun. Jack wrestles with him for the gun on Tuck's instructions and knees him in the groin. Jack's pulse rate increases as he flees from the apartment and hides from another thug. Tuck gets swept away by the bloodstream, so he releases a grappling hook to avoid entering Jack's heart and cuts a hole in the vein with a laser to leave the bloodstream. Soon, Jack goes to the lab and tells Niles that Tuck is inside him. Niles is pleased to hear that the experiment was a success because one of their goals is to establish visual and audio contact with the host. Niles talks with Pete privately to discuss their plan to get Tuck out, so Tuck enhances his audio signal to listen to their conversation. Tuck overhears that one of the chips was stolen, and they can't make a duplicate fast enough to retrieve Tuck before he runs out of oxygen. Pete stresses that they can't save Tuck, and the only thing they can do is draw out the people who stole the first chip. On Tuck's instructions, Jack takes Tuck's car keys and jacket from his locker and drives his red Mustang to Tuck's house. As soon as Jack arrives, Tuck asks him to take a chug of whiskey so that he can fill up his flask. Later, Tuck asks Jack to go to the mirror, because Tuck wants to see what he looks like. After seeing Jack's face on the screen, Tuck realizes that he's too drunk to drive, so he asks Jack to slap himself until he gets sober. Meanwhile, Lydia tells her editor that a scientist working for a lab called Vectorscope was murdered at the mall. Dwayne surmises that something must have been stolen from the lab because the notorious dealer of stolen tech known as the Cowboy is on his way to the city. Jack heads to the newspaper office to look for Lydia, but Tuck sees her on the street, so he instructs Jack to honk his horn. Lydia immediately recognizes Tuck's car and starts berating Jack, thinking he stole it. Jack explains that Tuck is in trouble but doesn't tell Lydia that Tuck has been miniaturized. He claims that he's being held for ransom and they need the microchip from Vectorscope to get him back. When Lydia starts asking him details about the supposed abduction, Jack goes to the bathroom. When he comes out, Igo grabs him. Lydia attempts to shoot Igo with a taser, but she ends up electrocuting Jack causing him to pass out. Igo carries Jack outside only to find out that his car is being towed, so he puts Jack in a refrigerated truck and steals it. Igo takes Jack near the Golden Gate Bridge to meet with Mr. Scrimshaw. Not far from their meeting spot, Lydia observes them as they prepare to leave. Inside the van, Scrimshaw tells Jack that he needs the chip inside the pod because he wants to take control of miniaturization technology. Lydia follows the truck closely while staying out of the driver's sight. While Scrimshaw is telling stories about his past, Tuck notices that the doors to the van are unlocked, so he starts motivating Jack so he would jump out when the truck slows down. However, Jack runs toward the door while the truck is still moving, so he ends up hanging on as the door swings open. Scrimshaw tries to bring him back inside, but he kicks him in the face. Lydia soon drives close to the truck so that Jack can jump into the car. When Jack manages to get both of his feet on the top of the windshield, he lets go of the truck and flops down on the car. Later, Jack and Lydia wait for the cowboy outside the hotel, where he always stays when he's in town. Lydia deduces that he might have the chip because he deals mostly in stolen technology. When the cowboy checks in, Lydia and Jack book the adjacent room so they can hear him if he leaves. Later that evening, the pair follows the cowboy to a club called the Inferno. After dancing and flirting with the cowboy for a while, Lydia informs Jack that Scrimshaw will pick up the cowboy in the morning to give him the microchip. She then instructs Jack to follow them back to the hotel. When Jack reaches the hotel, he bursts into the cowboy's room and knocks him out. After tying him up and putting him in the bathtub, Tuck scans the cowboy's face and activates the pod's emulation systems. Afterward, he alters Jack's face so he will look identical to the cowboy. When Jack comes out of the bathroom, he tries to explain to Lydia that he's Jack, but she doesn't believe him until she sees the cowboy in the bathtub. Moments later, Scrimshaw's men knock on the door to take the cowboy to their meeting place. Before the pair comes with them, Lydia makes Jack wear a fake gold tooth because the cowboy wears it. Upon their arrival, Scrimshaw and Margaret notice that the cowboy seems different from the last time they met, but Jack manages to come up with some explanation. Margaret notes that they only have one chip, 
which is only good for shrinking objects, she stresses that they still need the other chip to re-enlarge the objects they shrunk. Jack tells them that he will take the chip in their possession to convince their buyers that they have what they want. Scrimshaw soon prepares to give him the chip, but he starts suspecting that he's not the real cowboy when his fake tooth falls out. Scrimshaw notes that the real cowboy has an extraordinary tolerance for pain. Igo soon approaches Jack with a lit blowtorch on his mechanical arm while Scrimshaw holds him down. Jack starts hyperventilating in panic, and his face rapidly changes to his original appearance. When Jack comes down, he grabs the chip and throws it at Lydia, but it ends up in a bowl of dog food. Scrimshaw's men capture the two and lock them in the basement, so Tuck agrees to tell the truth to Lydia. However, she refuses to believe them, so Tuck asks Jack to relay his message to prove that he's telling the truth. Tuck notes that he doesn't blame Lydia for walking out on him, but his heart was actually broken that day, not his toe. Lydia starts kissing Jack when she realizes that he's not lying. Jack wants a private moment with Lydia, so he asks Tuck to shut down his audiovisual systems. After Tuck reluctantly agrees to his request, Jack and Lydia share another kiss. Later on, Tuck attempts to re-establish contact with Jack as Scrimshaw takes them to a lab, but he gets no response. Upon reaching the lab, they strap Jack into a table and reveal that they will miniaturize Igo. They will then inject him into Jack so he can kill Tuck and retrieve the second chip. Meanwhile, the thug guarding Lydia gets knocked out when he gets electrocuted with a taser while searching her bag. When Tuck goes exploring, he comes across a growing fetus and realizes that he was transferred to Lydia's body while she was kissing Jack. While the thug remains unconscious, Lydia calls Duane and instructs him to call the police. She gives him her current location and tells him to contact Vectorscope as well because she's with Tuck. Soon, after miniaturizing Igo, Margaret injects him into Jack's body. Lydia suddenly arrives and fires a gun in the air to urge them to let Jack go. Afterward, the pair forces Margaret, Scrimshaw, and his men to go inside the miniaturizer. They try to retrieve the chip from the machine, but they end up activating it with a reduction ratio of 50%. After a moment, a robotic arm pulls out the chip and drops it in Jack's hands. The police arrive moments later and discover the people inside the miniaturizer. Scrimshaw convinces them to let them out by claiming that he knows the mayor. Lydia and Jack come across a thug as they try to escape, so Jack beats him up, thinking that Tuck is inside him to make him strong. Lydia soon realizes that Tuck is inside her when she hears their favorite song in her ear. When they get to a car, Lydia kisses Jack again to transfer Tuck back to him. As they drive away from the compound, Pete sees Lydia and decides to follow them. After re-establishing contact, Jack informs Tuck that they're headed back to the vector scope, but he warns him that Igo is also inside his body. On the way to the lab, the downsized Margaret and Scrimshaw emerge from the back of the car and attack Lydia and Jack. As Jack and Lydia struggle to fight them off, Igo locates Tuck in the esophagus and immediately starts destroying the pod. When Jack crashes the car into a beach, Pete arrives and drives them to the lab. Meanwhile, Igo starts tearing down the air tanks, preventing Tuck from controlling the pod. The pod ends up hanging above a pool of gastrointestinal acid. As Igo drills on the glass of the pod, Tuck tells Jack that he might have a tumor to scare him and make him produce more acid. As his stomach acid accumulates, Tuck releases the pod, causing it to plunge to the pool, while Igo hangs on it. After seeing Igo's skeletal remains, Tuck informs Jack that he just digested Igo. As Tuck starts to run out of air, he makes his way towards Jack's mouth. When they reach the lab, Tuck asks him to sneeze because he doesn't have enough oxygen to make it out. After Jack sneezes, they retrieve Tuck's pod from Niles' eyeglasses. As soon as they load the chip into the circuit board, the lab technicians start the re-enlargement process. Moments later, the pod successfully returns to its normal size, and Tuck comes out gasping for air. As soon as he gets down, Tuck kisses Lydia and gives Jack a warm hug. When Tuck and Lydia get married, Jack gives them cruise tickets for their honeymoon. As the couple waits in a limo, the driver puts a large suitcase in the trunk. He opens the suitcase for a moment to inform Margaret and Scrimshaw that Tuck has the microchips. Soon after the limo leaves, Jack realizes that the driver is the cowboy, so he gets on Tuck's Mustang to chase them. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.